Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry I didn't put this up yesterday. I actually uh, made a screencast and uh, blah, 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 excuse, excuse, excuse. Anyway, um, today I'm here to talk about composition of functions. It's a new uh, operation that we have for functions other than add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And the symbol for it was that little circle that you saw at the end of your notes. Um, and you were probably wondering about. Okay, um, a, a person uh, said that the, with these uh, screencasts, they would like to see a pointer uh, to follow along with. So I uh, brought a pointer into the uh, presentation here. Here's my little pointer. Uh, today we're going to talk about composition of functions. All right, And the definition of a composition is just using the output or the y values of one function as the input or x values of another function. Now the notation that we have for composition is as follows. It's f with that little empty circle. Everybody see that little empty circle that he's pointing at? Of g. f circle g of x. We read this as f composition g of x. Now this means f parentheses g parentheses of x. What that ba basically means is I'm going to take the f equation and I'm going to compose him of the g equation in the problem. Okay, now let me explain to you a little bit more about what composition is in just kind of a common sense way. All right, so here's what I have. I have what's called a mapping diagram. Now what the mapping diagram talks about basically is if I have a bag of input values, or we call them x values, and I want to plug each one of these input values, the negative 2, the 0, the 1 half, and the 7, if I want to plug these into this new equation, say g of x, this function, 2x plus 1, what I'll get is an output for each one. So I'm going to plug the negative 2 in for x. If I were to do that, my problem would say g at negative 2 equals 2 times negative 2 plus 1. So negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So x is negative 2. y, or the output, would be negative 3. Now let's plug 0 in for x. If I did that, let's see if we can, I think we can do this one mentally. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 more is 1. Alright, plugging a half in for x, 2 times a half is 1, plus 1 more is 2. And then lastly, if I plug in the 7 for x, I get 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 more is 15. Okay, so this new bag of numbers is my output. But couldn't I take this output bag and make it an input bag? For a new function, say f of x equals x squared minus 5, well now, instead of me taking these values and plugging them into the old equation, I'm going to take each of these values, the negative 3, the 1, the 2, and the 15, right, and plug them into this equation, f of x. Well, if I do that, if I plug a negative 3 in for x, that would say f at negative 3 equals, don't forget parenthesis, negative 3 squared minus 5, which would be 9 minus 5 is 4. So my output when x is negative 3 is f at negative 3 is 4. So I need to take that 4 and put him into his own little bag with my little bag here. So my final output will be when x is negative 3, y is Four. All right. Plugging in a one into this new equation, one squared is one, and one minus five is negative four. Plugging in the two, two squared is four, and four minus five is negative one. And then lastly, plugging in the fifteen squared, fifteen, fifteen squared is. That's right, 225, and 225 minus 5 is 220. So this final group of values, the 4, the negative 4, the negative 1, and the 220, 
Well, these are all the final outputs from taking the original inputs and applying them to one function, taking those answers, and plugging those answers into a new function. And this is what composition is. It's taking the outputs of one function and putting them into the inputs of another function. Now, let's take a look and see if we can figure out maybe an easier way of doing this other than just using a mapping diagram. Well, let's take a look at some examples. I've got example one here. It says F composition G at two, right? Well, again, what that means is I'm going to take the two and I'm going to plug it into this G equation. So let's do that now. G of 2 would equal 2 times 2 minus 5. So 4 minus 5 is negative 1. But now I'm going to take that answer and plug that answer into the F equation. So F at negative 1 is negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 plus 1. So F at negative 1 would equal, doing all the math, that's 1 plus 3 plus 1 is 5. So my final answer to this composition problem is f at negative 1, or f at uh, negative 1 is 5. So 5 is my final answer. Taking a look at the next one, I'm going to take negative 3 and plug it into the g equation. Take that answer, I go g at negative 3 would equal 2 times negative 3 minus 5. So that would be negative 11 if I'm correct. Plugging in negative 11 into the f equation, I would get negative 11 squared minus 3 times negative 11 plus 1. Doing all the math, you get 121 plus 33 plus 1 more is 155. So F at negative 11 is 155. We'll do two more examples right here. If I have, ooh, interesting, F of position f at negative 1. Well, does it make sense that I'm going to put negative 1 to the f equation? When I do that, well, I did that right up above. I know the answer is 5, right? Uh, right here, we just did that problem. Let's not reinvent the wheel here. But now I'm going to take 5 and put that into the f equation. Again, the same f equation. And I would get, let's see here, 5 squared minus 3 times 5 plus 1 is 25 minus 15 plus 1 more. So, 11. So f at 5 is 11. Let's do gog. Gog at 7. G of 7. Well, that was, uh, the old, my old mind forgets what the g equation was. Well, I'm sorry about that. The g equation is 2x minus 5. So 2 times 7 minus 5. So that's 14 minus 5 is 9. Now I'm going to take that 9 and plug that in to the g equation again. I would get nine, 2 times 9 minus 5 is, final answer, final answer, 13. All right. You want to do it one more time? I, I, I think, I hopefully, we'll, we, we get the idea here, but let's have some fun with fractions. Let's do Okay. Let's take a look at one more problem. I've got f composition g at 3 halves. Well, again, take the g equation, put in 3 halves for the x, I get 2 times 3 halves minus 5. The 2's cancel, I get 3 minus 5, so g at 3 halves is negative 2. Now I'm going to take the negative 2, plug it into the f equation, I get negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 1 more. I get 4 plus 6 plus 1, f at negative 2 equals 11. I, I don't know what happened there. I, Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, let's uh, now let's take a look at what composition. Uh, how how can we do this instead of having to to plug in these values uh, into each equation and do two math problems? If I had a lot of uh, plot numbers to plug in for the both equations, like we did over here in this uh, in this uh, first example that I did, would there be a way that I could just create a single equation doing composition? And by doing that, I wouldn't have to uh, redo two math problems each time. Well, this is what we want to look at. Suppose I wanted to take um, 
the G equation that I have here and plug him into the F equation to create a new equation that would produce the same answer. Well, let's come over here and let's take a look at what we've got going on here. Suppose I wanted to do F composition G of any X. Well, what we do is we take the G equation, we get the answer, and we take that answer and we plug that into the F equation. Now what that means is you start with the F equation, the X squared minus 5. You take his X and you're going to replace him with this G equation, the 2X plus 1. So what we get is 2X plus 1 squared minus 5. Now simplifying, what we would get is 4X squared plus 4x plus 1 minus 5, which gives us a final answer of f composition g of x equals 4x squared plus 4x minus 4. Now, what does this mean? Well, if you take a look here, would you agree that when I had, say for example, when x was negative 2 in the original, uh, in the original uh, input, and I plug it into the G equation, I got an answer of negative 3. But when I plug that negative 3 into the F of X equation, I got the output, the final output was a 4. Well, watch what happens when I do this now. Let's suppose that I took this negative 2, and instead of plugging it into the first equation, getting that answer, plugging the negative 3 into the next equation, what happens if I just plug the negative 2 all the way into the X down here in this general composition equation. Well, what I get is, let's take a look. So F composition G of X would equal, I'm sorry, F negative 2 would equal 4 times negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 4. Well, doing the math, order of operation style, I get negative 2 squared is 4, so 4 times 4, minus 8, minus 4, so I get 16 minus 8 minus 4 is, well, 16 minus 8 is 8, and 8 minus 4 more is 4. Well, wait a minute, what was the answer that I got when I did it, the, when I plugged it in, the, the negative 2 into both equations? Wait a minute, don't those answers match? Don't the two answers that I just got, the, the 4 that I got here, is the same as the 4 that I got when I plugged in negative 2 to the first equation, got that answer of negative 3, and took the negative 3, plug it in here, and I got 4. And I, that's one less math problem. Now, in this case, you know, if you only had to do one number, I would do it the, the way that I showed you originally. But if you have to plug in several numbers, then it would be better, it would behoove you to do what I just did here and take the general G equation where, where, where's my pointer? Take the general G equation, plug it into the F equation, get a general equation right here, and then plug your value in for that if you have multiple values. So let me go through and let me do a couple of those examples. All right? Suppose I've got F of X is equal to X squared plus 2, and G of X is equal to X minus 1, and H of X is equal to X minus 2. What if I wanted to do some problems here? Suppose I wanted to do, say, uh, F composition G of just, a, in general, X. Well, again, what that says is to take the G equation and plug him into the F equation. So I'm going to start with the F equation. I like to circle my X's. I like to say, hey, X, you've got to go. I'm going to put X minus 1 in his position, because that's what the G equation is. Notice that all the other things, all the other math in there, just that it just stays, right? Now I'm going to simplify. When I FOIL, I get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 1 more equals, final answer, x squared minus 2x plus 2. So the composition of f at, of g of x is x squared minus 2x plus 2. Now, let's do another one. Let's do, let's do one with the square root. Let's 
doing with the square root in there? Take a look at the h equation, right? What if I did say um, f composition h of x? Well, wouldn't that say take the f equation and place the h equation into him like this? Which means you're going to take the h equation, circle the x, put x minus 2, the h equation, in for that x, and then simplify. Well, wait a minute. Don't squares and square roots, don't they cancel each other out here? These guys cancel each other. So wouldn't that just liberate the x minus 2? Oh, but wait a minute. Couldn't I combine the 2's and I get just x? All right? So in this case, in this case, when all the x, when all the, when you do f composition h of x, you get just a plain x. For a prize on Monday, if anybody, the first person to tell me what that tells me about f composition h, then what, if they, what that they get, 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 boo, what that means about the function f and they have function h, if you can tell me what they, what their relation is to each other, you'll get a prize. All right, now. The, uh, what I didn't ask you, by the way, I forgot to ask you this. What is the domain? Right? We haven't talked about domain because this is an operation, and we know that we're doing domains here. So let's see the domain of this composition. Right? Well, let's see here. Hmm. The domain. Well, should I consider the domain at my final answer? Because if that's the case, then the domain would be all reals. But is that what I should do? Well, the answer to that is, no, I should not. So, why? Well, didn't we say back in, uh, in the beginning of uh, operations with functions, shouldn't we always consider the domain of any operation before we simplify? So at this point, I've got to find the domain of this guy right here. This is the composition I'm simplifying. Now, do you see any red flags? Sure do. I see an x and a radical. So I think we're pretty good at this at this point. I say that x has to be greater than or equal to 2, right? Because anything less than that would give me a negative inside that square root, and that's no good. So I know that my domain written in interval notation is negative infinity, comma, 2, parenthesis, yin, parenthesis, 2, comma, infinity. Oh, guys, I, uh, I appreciate your attention. Uh, look online for a worksheet. And I'll talk to you guys later. And by the way, sorry for that. Uh, I don't know what happened in the middle there. Hope it didn't uh, startle you.